At Corny and Lynn Lawyers, we have a vision to provide advice and solutions that will deliver just, redemptive and restoring outcomes. Each of our lawyers believes in the call on their lives to contribute to the fabric of this world through strategic counsel, courageous advocacy and clear documentation. This leads to just, redemptive outcomes. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on why you need a trademark to protect your business name or company name. My name is Kathleen Corney and Lind Lawyers uh, and today's topic falls within uh, one of our six key practice areas uh, which is commercial law. Uh, as I got into the content it became apparent that this may go for more than half an hour and it, it's likely to go for around 40 minutes. I hope this doesn't inconvenience inconvenience anyone but if you do need to sign off after 30 minutes the recording will be placed online uh, and you can catch up with the remaining part of the webinar anytime that's uh, best for you. So uh, within the commercial law area we have advised many small medium and large size businesses in relation to a wide range of matters that includes these discrete matters such as protecting intellectual and property and uh, larger scale transactions such as business acquisitions and disposals as well as land licensing, leases and sales. But we do have a number of other key areas which you can see on the slide there. Um, they include schools and education, not-for-profit and charity, uh, commercial as we've discussed, employment law and discrimination, family law, and estate and elder law, which covers a wide range of areas such as wills, enduring powers of attorney, retirement village entry, and aged care packaging. Um, I, I note that a uh, question has been asked already, and um, that's wonderful. We do want this to be interactive. Um, I will uh, put them off to the end of the webinar, though, just to uh, just in case your question is answered throughout the process. So um, please feel free to type them in at any stage, though. So firstly, uh, we're considering why is a registered business name not enough? Um, I think the first thing to consider here is why do you need a registered business name? It is a Commonwealth legislative requirement that any person, partnership or entity that's operating a business or a trade in Australia must register a business name. That's on a national business register, a business names register, sorry, that's maintained by ASIC. Um, some exceptions to this do apply, uh, although if you are operating as an individual using your first and last name or if you already have a registered company name, but we'll get on to that. Um, it is a fact that entities are no longer entitled to operate under unregistered trading names. Um, it is an offence, so it is a requirement set out, but it's not a protective measure. It doesn't protect your ownership or use of that name. Um, and as you can see on the slide, the Business Names Registration Act sets out in Section 22 that the purpose of the register is to enable those who engage or propose to engage with the business carried on under a business name to identify the entity carrying on the business and how the entity may be contacted. So it's really based on public policy reasons to protect the public by promoting transparency. So consumers have the ability to know who's behind the name. So are you dealing with the genuine director or responsible person for the entity? Is the entity solvent? And there's a number of other matters that you might want to determine by conducting proper searches. Um, so in light of this regulatory requirement, I guess, it's really, as, as the slide points out, it's not about protecting your rights at all. It's a common misconception with business names. However, it can be said that uh, obviously to have certainty for consumers, you need to ensure that other entities can't register identical names uh, or ASIC will ensure that identical names aren't registered. Um, so there's some administrative protective there, protection, uh, but it, it does not extend to similar names. So um, identical names are out, but similar names um, can be registered. Uh, 
for that matter, you will need to be sure that a name that you want to use is available, which can be checked online. Um, there's a link there on the slide. The slides will be made available online on our website afterwards as well. Um, so to check that name availability is important. Um, another issue with a registered business name is that it won't guard you, it won't provide immunity uh, for you from infringing the rights of other traders. So ASIC will not notify you when you register a business name that it is substantially identical or uh, deceptively similar to a registered trademark. Um, and because you are able to re register similar business names, there's no guarantee that in registering yours, you're not infringing a registered trademark. So you need to consider whether your business name infringes another entity's rights before you register your business name. And in the best case scenario, before you've established an identity or goodwill around that business name, it can be an expensive process if you need to go through rebranding after finding out that you're infringing someone else's rights.